Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, Outer Space. Space. I hope you enjoy. Humans are scary. Inquisition, written by Ace Zero. It started as a joke. A group of like-minded LARPers started a flotilla in human-controlled space. They called themselves the Holy Order of the Human Inquisition, or the Inquisition for short. No one, not even their fellow humans, took them seriously, as they didn't have any governing power, despite being armed in such a way to compete with the conventional military. The Terran Republic decided that despite their mannerisms and their armaments, they were never actually hurting anyone so they just let the Inquisition be. Then, the Fertilla eventually grew to the point where they could legally afford to own a number of unexplored and uninhabited planets in Terran space. So, they bought them. They bought a star system with several inhabited worlds and made sure to sign a permanent alliance with the Republic as a precautionary effort. There were no tensions between the two factions, and the alliance was put into place to ensure there never was. The worlds under the control of the Inquisition were all colonized, and their people, born and raised, to have the Inquisitor's mindset, so the next generation would behave in a similar way to their fathers and mothers. Then we, the Xenoxi, declared war on the humans. More specifically, we declared war in the Terran Republic. All the allied human nations declared war on us, but due to our unique method of warfare, we thought that we'd be safe from repercussion for a time. The Xenoxi have a unique way of fighting war. Our tactics are such that we have our great first strike capabilities, but we cannot defend our captured territories very well. Our ground defenses simply take too much time to set up, and a quick enemy can retake any captured planets with ease. Therefore, we avoid killing civilians on the planets we invade. Most races are thankful for this, and we found that the humans respected this greatly, but we need not do it for the altruistic reasons. The Xenoxi employ a weapon of war called the Mind Might. It is a nanite ball injected into the captured individuals that travels through the bloodstream and into the brain. The mind of the species is analyzed and rewired from the inside out to feel subservience and loyalty to the High King of the Xenoxi. And through technicality, it is not a weapon banned by Galactic Concord, the Nanites then break themselves down into nutrients to be absorbed into the host's body, making it so that the meddling is undetectable. This weapon greatly influenced our standard strategy in warfare. We take a planet and occupy it, then we inject a portion of the population with mind mites, creating a resistance cell in the local population. If enough people are injected, then we are the rightful owners of the planet return. They will find that they aren't just fighting Xenoxy warriors, but their own people as well. Most societies would abandon the planet, not willing to attack others of their own kind. In fact, no other species in the galaxy has been able to counter this tactic. That all changed when a human ambassador had publicly accused the Kingdom of Xanox of using banned weapon on human civilians. We don't know if the Terrans discovered the mind mites were being used on humans, but it didn't matter. We never made it a secret that we used them, and the weapon wasn't banned by Concord law. They were chastised by the council and informed of this. We expected the ambassador to retreat with his proverbial tail between his legs afterwards, but he revealed that there was no such uncertain ruling in the Geneva Conventions, a set of laws for warfare that had been signed by most human nations, and some non-human ones, including the Keth. Upon further inspection, our legal analysts had determined that the mind mites were a convention violation and their use was banned in war against the signatories. Everyone in the galaxy knew what this meant. The Xenoxi had broken the Geneva Convention, and that meant that the humans would commit to total war. But what could they really do? Our species, when given enough time and resources, could turn every planet we were stationed on into impervious fortresses, and we knew of no species willing to turn their guns on their own kind, especially when they were just being mind-controlled, as the human ambassador had put it. We were confident, despite breaking their precious conventions, that we would be able to weather their attempts to break us. No army had been able to stand up to us, 
and they would surely falter before turning their weapons against their own brainwashed citizens. Then the Inquisition came. A massive fleet of Inquisition ships had shown up around one of the colony worlds we had taken. Our own attack fleet had retreated from the system, not willing to fight them when their own people would do it for us. We figured that we could pull back, wait a few cycles, and then return after the native humans drove them off. Nobody expected the colony just to go dark. Without explanation, we simply lost contact with our human collaborators of the colony. Unexpected, but not unheard of. Some individuals in species can spontaneously become resistant to the effect of the mind mites. Then we lost contact with another human cell. Then another. Soon enough, all of the human colony worlds we gained in the latest campaign had gone dark, with not a single human on our side responding to our calls. This unnerved our commanders. Had the humans found a way to detect individuals in which we used the mind mites, or had they found a way to remove their effects? Both were dismissed as impossible. Once the change had taken place, not a trace of the mind mites were left and the changes themselves are no different from the variances in personality. So how come the humans we had used the mind mites on were disappearing? That answer would come as swiftly as it was horrifying. As we gathered for another push into human space, the Inquisition sent their fleet around the previously human planet of New Tennessee. Our fleet was caught off guard, and our captains were not trained to repel surprise attacks. Most of our ships fled, and the ones left that weren't destroyed landed on the planet below to assist with the ground defenses. Most of the human population on New Tennessee had already been converted with mind mites. Though a scant few remained, the Inquisition armies landed, and we prepared defenses. No one expected what came next. The armies of the Inquisition began firing on our positions, and we watched in shock as our human allies fell. Many of us were confused. Were these not humans, the same humans that had previously demonstrated that they weren't willing to kill civilians and hostages? The same humans that couldn't pull the trigger when their guns were aimed at brainwashed citizens? Most of our forces snapped out of their stupor and returned fire. Our weapons and human allies fought bravely, and while our humans had tactics that benefited us, they meant nothing to the humans of the Inquisition. Our armies were slaughtered wholesale with plasma weapons, flamethrowers, and large-caliber kinetic weapons firing at alarmingly high rates. Our armies in New Tennessee lay broken and defeated, but the slaughter did not stop there. The Inquisition did not come to the colony as liberators or conquerors. They came as exterminators. They took no prisoners. They killed and burned everything in sight, man, woman, and children alike both human and Xenoxy, regardless of whether or not the humans had been subjected to mind mites. It was then that our commanders realized with growing horror why we had lost contact with our human collaborators. The Inquisition had not simply rooted them out through advanced detection or countermeasures. The Inquisition had simply burned everything and everyone on the planets that we took. No one was responding because there was no one left to respond. What follows is an excerpt from the helmet recorder of a fallen Xenoxy warrior, played for the Xenoxy officers who were in charge of the occupation of New Tennessee. A human falls to the ground, onto the back next to the Xenoxy defender, rapidly trying to scurry away from an unseen person with a look of fear on his face. Footsteps are heard approaching the person from off-screen, until the lower half of the human clad in black appears, gripping the large revolver in his hand. Please, begs the human, I'm not a traitor. I I'm innocent. There is no such thing as innocence. Heretic! The Inquisitor levels his pistol at the human's head and pulls the trigger. Only varying degrees of guilt. The human fell to the ground, dead. The feed cuts as something off-screen smashes the helmet. The human was later identified as one of the ones that we had yet to inject with mind mites. We had accounted for many things when fighting other species. But this level of violence and brutality hadn't been heard of since the Christian crisis. It was utterly unthinkable that there was a species out there willing to destroy entire colonies just to root out traitors in their own ranks. We had thought the other human governments wouldn't stand for this, 
and our ambassadors of the Concord contacted the ambassadors of the Terran Republic. The Republic ambassador seemed sympathetic, but when asked what they would do in response to the Inquisition's actions, he shrugged. We can't do anything, the ambassador told us. The Inquisition never signed the Geneva Conventions. Granted, neither did you, but we can't do anything if a non-signatory attacks another. It's just going to be business as usual. Looking back, I now believe the human ambassador was just putting up a front. I believe that, in truth, the other factions inhabiting Terran space are looking the other way, because the Inquisition are the ones dealing with someone who broke their convention. Still, we try to fight the Inquisition in space. Our planets were all veritable fortresses, and what could the Inquisition do to a planet that they couldn't invade? Then we learned the term exterminatus. Once Inquisition fleets had dealt with our defending ships, they simply began orbiting the planet and bombarding it from orbit until the surface was turned to glass. The Inquisition had ships fecking dedicated to this task. Who does that? Who does that? Who bombards a planet without giving the people on the planet a chance to evacuate or defend themselves? What's more... I'm told the Inquisition feels completely justified in this action. They say that they are trying to prevent the heretical knowledge and technology from falling into the hands of the wider galaxy. I can only assume they mean the mind mites. They won't allow anything or anyone, even tangentially related to the mind mites, to exist. The plasma bombardments are getting closer to my city now. The Inquisition has already shut down every transport and has tried to free the homeworld. This... Maybe my last act of defiance. I do this to spite the Inquisition. Within this message is a data package with the designs for the Xenoxy Mind Mind colony. Anyone with sufficient technology can replicate it. I can only hope. Transmission ends in an explosion. Last transmission of Duke and of House Jehu, formerly of the Kingdom of Xanox. End of story. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and patrons. Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Barky, It's Difficult to Pronounce, Lord Azrakul, and Arcadian. 